Alrighty guys, I am so excited for today's tutorial. We are going to be learning how to crochet a two-color Tunisian crochet dishcloth. I am so excited to show you guys this technique because I think it looks so stinking cool. I will link the pattern that we're going to be using and all of the materials that you will need and links to them um, in the description box below. So be sure to check out that resource because, like I said, there's lots of information down there. Um, I'm going to be doing my best to share every step along the way in this video, but um, definitely reference that printed pattern or PDF pattern, blog post version, whichever you prefer um, as needed because it will only be a helpful resource for you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I have chosen two colors of We Crochet Dishy today. I'm going to be using a dark gray and then a white. So I wanted to have a really high contrast for this video. Um, and I think it's going to look really, really nice. So if you're curious with this um, sample, I used We Crochet Dishy as well. It's my favorite, 100% cotton yarn. Um, I used, I think it's called Silver for the light gray. And then this really pretty mauled or twisted um, is Dishy Twist in the colorway conch. So I think they look really cool together. Alrighty, so if you've seen my tutorial on how to crochet a solid color or one color Tunisian crochet dishcloth, this is going to be the same exact pattern. We're just going to be changing it up a little bit to accommodate for two colors. And it's not a difficult technique by any means, but it does take a little bit of getting used to. So I thought it would be helpful to have, you know, a separate tutorial for both of these techniques. So we're going to be getting starting started today with a slip knot. And then we're going to place that on our hook. And for our foundation chain, you can make this as narrow or as wide as you'd like it to be. But for today's sample, I'm going to be chaining 30 stitches. So simply yarn over and pull through that loop. And we're going to do that 29 more times for a total of 30 chains. <music> Alrighty, so here are my 30 chains. Like I said, this can be any number that you want, but I personally like the width of 30. And now we are going to turn this over and work into these back spine stitches to give us a night, nice, a night, a nice clean edge. Um, and again, we are continuing with our first color for this section. So we're going to change to the white or change to our contrast color here in just a minute. But for this forward pass for the first um, half of row one, we're going to stick with this same color. So I'm going to skip the very first stitch, insert my hook into the next spine stitch, yarn over and pull through a loop. And I'm going to repeat that all the way down. So just insert your hook into that next spine stitch, yarn over and pull through a loop. And then we're going to repeat that all the way down our work until we have um, all 30 loops on our hook. Okay, so I have picked up all 30 loops and they are all on my hook really quickly before because I forgot to mention it earlier. I am using an interchangeable Tunisian crochet hook today and I will link the set that I use down below. It's my favorite that I found so far. Because of that, I do have a cable attached to it. Um, but like, as you can see here, I don't need all of this space. So I've just tied it like this so that it, you know, kind of doesn't affect the any noise that you might hear um, against the table or anything. So it's not usual to have it set up like this, but it works well for me um, for something this small. So just thought I would go ahead and mention that. Okay, so we have finished our return pass. We have picked up all of these loops. The first half of row one is done. Now we are going to go ahead and switch to our contrast color. So we're going to, like I said, this is the same pattern as a one color dishcloth. It's just adding in this little technique. Um, so for our return pass, we're going to do the same thing that we always do. We're going to um, use our contrast color instead. So instead of yarning over with the gray like I typically would, I'm going to place my white contrast color um, on the hook here. That's going to act as our yarn over. And then I'm going to pull through one to get to the right height. I'm going to drop the tail of that white yarn. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two stitches. And I'm going to do that all the way across. So yarn over pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, so on and so forth. Um, and you can kind of see these two colors start to, you know, play nicely with each other. I, like I said, this is just such a cool technique. So again, I'm just yarning over and pulling through two loops at a time. And I'm going to repeat this all the way across. 
Alrighty, there we go. So I have finished row one now. Um, we are going to be switching colors every time we get to the end of a forward pass or before we start the return pass. So just kind of keep that in mind. Once you get into the rhythm of doing that, it's so easy and you don't have to think about it. Um, but it's just really helpful, at least for me, to keep in mind that all of my ends are always going to be on this side. Um, and this is when I'm always going to switch to the next color. So for row two, we're going to start with the return pass. We're going to or excuse me, the forward pass, we're going to insert our hook again, so using our contrast color into the first vertical bar, and then grab that yarn and pull up a loop, and we're going to repeat that all the way across. So insert your hook into that vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop, and we're going to repeat that until we get down to the opposite end, um, and then I will show you how to work this very last stitch because it's a little bit different, and um, we're going to go through two strands of yarn instead of just one, to give us a nice clean edge. Alrighty, so I have one stitch remaining. It can be a little bit easy to miss this stitch, so definitely, you know, don't miss it. Try to find it. Um, it helps to just try to think of think of it as placing your hook somewhere for the first couple of rows, um, just to get it, you know, kind of set up. It's also a little bit trickier than it is with just one color of yarn, um, because we do have these ends on the side here, but definitely it's still doable. So I'm going to flip my project to the side here just a little bit, and I'm going to insert my hook into two strands of yarn. Now for this very first um, row, it's actually going to be the tail is our second strand of yarn, so you can just kind of keep that in mind. And we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop, and that's going to be our final stitch. So like I said, it's a little bit tricky right now, but eventually that's going to help um, keep this edge right here nice and straight, um, much sooner than it would be if we just chose to go through one strand of yarn. Okay, and because we are about to work a return pass, we're going to go ahead and bring up our original color, our main color, which for me is this gray. Um, I definitely like to just keep both strands of yarn attached the entire time because it is um, way too cumbersome to cut your ends every single time. Please don't do that. Just carry them up the side um, of our work here. So we're going to bring up this yarn and begin our return pass. So for the return pass, we are going to bring up our gray color, our original um, main color here. And we're going to just yarn over and pull through that very first stitch and then yarn over and pull through two all the way across. And that's all there is to it. So really all we're doing here, maintaining the same, you know, Tunisian simple stitch techniques that we've done before. We're just using two colors instead of just one and kind of adding in that um, extra technique technique there. So I'm going to work this return pass and then I will show you how to work the forward pass one more time and then we will go ahead and switch colors one last time and then I will leave you to it. Alrighty, there is my finished return pass for row two. We're just going to repeat this row until our dishcloth dish cloth is either square or just as long as you want it to be. Um, I am going to make mine until I have 25 rows, which will be about square and that's just the size that I prefer. But again, you can modify that however you see fit. And then, like I mentioned, we're going to switch colors every time um, right before we do a return pass. So, again, for the forward pass, we're going to insert a hook into each vertical bar and pull up a loop. And I'm using the gray for this one. And we will be using white for the next row. And so I'm just going to work in each vertical bar, pulling up one loop all the way across. And then I will meet you back here when I get to the end of the row so that I can show you how to work that very last stitch again. Okay, I made it to the end of my row. I'm going to turn my work just a little bit to the side here and catch two strands of yarn. It'll be one, one of each color. I'm going to insert my hook into that and then yarn over and pull up a loop. And that will be our last stitch of the row. And then just like before, for the return pass, we're going to bring up the white again, yarn over, pull through one to get to the right height, and then yarn over and pull through two all the way across. And that's all there is to it. So we are going to continue working in this same manner. Like I said, until we have a square dishcloth, 25 rows, as long as you want it to be, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, and then I will meet you back here when my dishcloth is the right size um, to show you how to bind off and finish off this dishcloth.
Alrighty, so I have now finished the body of my dishcloth and I am ready to bind off. Like I mentioned, I did 25 rows for this dishcloth and that's what's mentioned in the pattern, but of course you can make it to be any length that you want. Um, so now I am ready to bind off. Now just as a personal preference, I like to use the same color I started with to bind off, which for me is a dark gray. I just like the way that looks the best, but it's completely up to you. It doesn't really matter. So I just finished my last return pass and now I am ready to bind off and it's super simple. All we're going to do is insert our hook into the first vertical bar like we've been doing and pull up a loop just like we've done for the t for the forward pass. Um, but instead of continuing with this, I'm just pulling up 30 more loops. We are going to instead simply pull the first loop through the second or the second loop through the first, I guess is what I should say. Um, just like that. So again, Insert your hook into the next vertical bar, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the first, just like that. So we're basically just working at slip stitches almost um, all the way across the top of our dishcloth here, and that is going to bind it off. So we're just going to repeat this process all the way to the end of the row. Okay, so I'm to the very last stitch, and like I've been doing, I'm going to work in two loops on this edge instead of just one strand of yarn. And again, I'm going to slip stitch through that, and that's all there is to it. So now all of our edges, all of our stitches, excuse me, are pound off, and we have a very nice, neat um, top edge that matches the bottom hem here. And now we are just going to cut this yarn. I've already gone ahead and cut my white, so now I just have two tails. Uh, I'm going to yarn over and pull through to secure that last loop that was on the hook. And then I'm just going to flip the dishcloth to the wrong side, which we can see looks so cool because of the two colors. Like it is so perfectly striped. I love it so much. And now I'm going to just um, weave in all of my ends. So my favorite way to do this for Tunisian crochet is just to work on the wrong side here and go under a few of the loops with each um, strand that I have. So I'm just going to work just like this, just kind of weave in and out of the bumps here. Um, it's very similar to knitted garter stitch or the pearl stitch, um, if you're familiar with that. So I just like to weave in ends just like I would on a knit fabric um, when I've done Tunisian crochet. And I'm just going to repeat that for all three of these ends or all four total. Um, and then our dishcloth will be complete. I hope you found this tutorial fun and encouraging to follow along with it and that you learned something new through it. Like I mentioned throughout the video, be sure to check out all of the links in the description box below. You can find the pattern that I used in this tutorial as well as all of the materials and details about them and then of course my social media platforms and pattern shops as well. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy making. Bye!